Okay, there we go. There you go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm really uh, very much appreciative of the opportunity to uh, join Steve Shore and his group uh, doing these lectures. I think I've been involved in them from the beginning for some years now, so it's been a real pleasure to, 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 to do that. Um, as the intro mentioned, I've been in this business for a very long time. Uh, this is my 67th year since I encountered my graduate studies, and which is on the same topic, basically, nutrition, if you will. Uh, and I have to say, be honest about it, um, uh, during this whole time, I've really been puzzled by the fact that nutrition as a science, as well as a practice, has been so ignored for so long. Um, and so I want to talk about that topic, I say, today. Uh, I want to speak to it, too, also from a, a so-called journey in classical science. I mean, science to me is is really fundamental to uh, what we learn about things. Uh, let me just pull this down here just a second. Okay. Um, and I have a couple of quotes here from Neil Tyson, who's the uh, director of the uh, Hayden Planetarium, by the way, astrophysicist, wrote a great book out. But in any case, uh, here's some quotes from, from his book uh, that match exactly what I've said myself. A scientist's entire mission in life is to discover features of nature that are true, even if they conflict with their own philosophies. Um, so when, when for the comment here on science, uh, consider what happens when scientists disagree. We look for one of three outcomes, either I'm right and you're wrong, or you're right and I'm wrong, or we're both wrong. Who decides the outcome? Nobody does. Think about that. That's really quite a, quite a remarkable statement and expressed in another way that I like. I've used it a long time myself. We own opinions and we don't own facts. Unfortunately, much of the conversation that occurs in this field, I, I find, is more about opinions, not facts. And people don't seem to know the difference, quite frankly. Um, as I said, I started out on this is uh, important for the background here to what I'm going to say. I started out from, on a farm. That's me here on the top of the, on the front end of the combine. And, and uh, I was raised uh, milking cows and hunting and fishing and doing all the things farm boys do. Finally, in 1956, uh, my dad sold the cows and I was off to school. Uh, and so that activity on the farm without my necessarily knowing it all that well was fun, fun, and for the purpose of actually um, producing milk and beef, if you will, and, and all for the purpose of getting enough animal protein. So then I went away to uh, Cornell University, did my doctoral dissertation. Uh, and that that uh, research, by the way, uh, there was on the uh, topic of ensuring or advancing the consumption of more animal protein. That was my background, much just like everyone else. Uh, and then uh, after finishing that and doing a tour at MIT, I was on a faculty in Virginia Tech University, put in responsibility for coordinating a pro program of female and their children in the Philippines. Um, and there we were expected to uh, basically uh, make sure that these kids got enough protein. But what I saw there was kind of strange. Uh, it was about um, basically uh, getting liver cancer, unfortunately. I, misplaced my earlier slides. Um, in any case, uh, I, it was about uh, seeing something there that I didn't expect to see. The children, the amount of children, uh, along with a few others, uh, it turned out that the children getting the most protein were the ones most likely to be getting liver cancer. And so that's what set me on my journey. Um, and so I just want to give that background because I come from a place not previous, my uh, sort of uh, prepared me for what I actually learned. In fact, it was actually the opposite in many ways. So now we're in stages, as I say, where nutrition is so confusing. I, I can't imagine anything being more confusing, to be honest about it. Here's a start. Um, if you look at the different kinds of diets, I've listed a few diets here that, whose names are fairly well known, 20 of them altogether. There's more. Uh, and I don't understand how the public can begin to understand what nutrition is with so many options of talking about it in various and sundry ways. Uh, in my research community, 
uh, we in turn add to the confusion as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we talk about individual nutrients as such they have special properties. We can use them by themselves. We talk about the amounts in food. Or we talk about the individual nutrient recommendations and nutrient targets and even nutrient supplements, if you will. Um, and so the medical community, in turn, ignores it, doesn't even teach it. There's not a hospital in the United States that I'm aware of that teaches nutrition. So we're on the, going out on the wrong foot to start with. And I would argue that this combination of things I'm just showing here is really the this, this seed for much of the, the confusion we now have. So uh, another point that I want to make here early on is uh, sort of sorting out the confusion on the words that we tend to use for this arena. Uh, diet, we speak of diet and nutrition almost interchangeably, is not. Diet is, is something is just a mere collection of foods we regularly consumed. Uh, foods uh, are digested to the nutrients, they are absorbed, transported organs, absorbed into cells, uh, metabolized the products that function, then get stored or excreted. Uh, nutrition is uh, therefore somewhat different from the words diets and foods. Uh, nutrition, I would suggest, at least that's the way I learned it and taught it for many years, is the biological expression of food. What happens to food when, when after we consume it? Uh, now, to get up to date a little bit more about these days than what I knew from before, um, we've got systemic problems. Uh, and I'm listening to a few here. You can add a lot more, I'm sure. Uh, but it, we have, I've grouped them into environmental problems. Uh, basically, as you can see here, we talk about climate warming, topsoil loss, so forth and so on, species loss. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, we've got human health issues, uh, health care costs, we use drugs to the extent to which we're totally dependent on them. In fact, we have drug side effects, a high rate of disease, mortality, short of life, and so forth. So we've got these different sort of topics or subtopics of the larger problem, uh, each of which suggests that they have individual causes. Uh, and then in turn, uh, we have uh, on drug dependency, that in turn is related as I'm showing here, with healthcare calls, drug side effects, short of life. And so we've got a lot of work to do. We're, we're in a business now of recognizing all kinds of problems. Uh, we're working on them one by one by one, usually, as if they have single causes. I'm going to argue, in fact, that uh, there's one broad spectrum cause, and that's something we're missing. For all of these topics here, uh, basically, it's the fact that we don't talk about food nutrition, which in fact is starting out to be very confusing for a lot of folks or unknown to them. Um, and so I want to now uh, jump to uh, some other things that we're experiencing that sort of sets this topic aside in a way. Uh, we are the highest, we have the highest per capita use of pharmaceuticals in the world. We're the only country, uh, actually I say New, New Zealand does too, but I was talking to a New Zealand journalist who say they have something in their Senate at the moment. They're going to get out of this. But nonetheless, the U.S. essentially is the only uh, country who advertises TB prescription drugs. So we use a lot. We advertise them all over the place. Uh, but yet, on the other hand, prescription drugs have side effects. Believe it or not, drug side effects is either number three or number four, depending on how you count them. But as a third leading cause of death of data that I'm familiar with, uh, right behind heart disease and cancer. Something a few people know. We are laden with the use of a lot of drugs to solve problems that need not exist in the first place. And then we turn it around, taking all these drugs, we have to live the side effects as third leading cause of death. Life expectancy is something that is uh, from the top of the news that I hear. Um, it's a is uh, been mis uh, misrepresented. Our life expectancy uh, beyond 65 years is way down the list. Uh, in fact, among uh, Western countries, affluent countries, if you will, we're in last place uh, for life expectancy uh, from, from birth onwards. So we're not doing very well. Uh, and of course, uh, at the same time, we're living with this rationale for using drugs and not understanding nutrition. To put all that together, um, we've got confusion, we've got consequences, 
uh, and somehow are not looking at this thing in the right way.